Hey everybody, I just wanted to make this video to walk you through the process of designing the light-themed sun dragon uh, that was a collaboration with Delightful in her latest video. So right off the bat you see me exploring a couple of uh, motifs, mostly the sunburst idea with the crest of horns that made it through to the, the finished uh, concept at the end. And that idea sort of just comes out of being an artist and working with color a lot and thinking about the way that prisms and crystals break up the visual spectrum of light. So you have white light and that sort of splinters into all the different colors of the spectrum and you can see that uh, when reflected through a crystal prism. And I thought that might be a really neat theme to have a central kind of unicorn horn in the middle of the character's head and then have this frill kind of crest in sort of a sun uh, motif arrangement around their head, crowning them with all the colors of the rainbow. So that was the main guiding light, <laughs> pun intended, uh, for the design going forward. And I used that as a jumping off point. Uh, I just began to explore. It's, these first sketches here are just warm-ups, trying to get comfortable with dragons and dragon shapes. I, I knew that I wanted her to feel very powerful and majestic. Light itself, obviously, is a powerful theme and uh, deserved a lot of, uh, you know, majesty associated with it, which is a tough thing when you're designing a character. The other thing I wanted to do, as you can see here, I, I brought some reference in from the Spyro designs I, I had done and, and have been doing since the games came out. And I wanted to, you know, keep a handle on the style from the Spyro Reignited trilogy while also adapting it for uh, the specific needs of the project. I knew ultimately this was going to be uh, a beautiful doll uh, by Catherine, and I wanted to make sure that uh, the design felt like something that could be in Spyro, but also something that was uh, had the, the elegance and uh, and beauty of the the doll work that she does. Uh, here I've also imported the uh, design of, of Nyx, the first dragon, sort of night and darkness themed. And I thought it would be really cool to, to be thinking about uh, this design as kind of a an opposite uh, to sort of bookend the dragon series. Trying out a couple different wing types, I was feeling frustrated, and then suddenly I hit on this uh, moth-shaped motif and the theme of like light and moths being drawn and attracted to light and it just felt like too funny and too good to to pass up so rather than going with traditional dragon wings or angel wings or something that you'd be more used to seeing I thought it would be a really cool signature thing in addition to the crest of sunburst horns to have a, a moth style uh, wing type. So now I've got the kind of ideas kind of worked out in my head uh, as I sketch through, and uh, I'm just kind of working out the shapes uh, in sketch form. I do this you know, several times over the course of it all. I, I want to balance everything out. I don't want it to feel too overloaded. One thing I, I arrived at quickly was this sort of frilled collar that um, her neck is, is long and elegant, and I wanted to preserve that, but I also thought it was really neat, give it kind of a, a royal um, feeling for her to have this high collar, almost like a... Uh, sort of paintings of, of queens and the frill kind of creates a halo behind her head I played initially with the idea of, of with that moth theme kind of having the uh, scales sort of also accented with fur kind of the way that moths are quite fuzzy but eventually I moved away from that I felt like it was kind of just uh, complicating her silhouette too much and right into color, and if, if you've seen my previous videos about uh, color stuff, I'm just trying to set up a, a basic palette, knowing that I'm building these golds and, and uh, ambers towards a place where I can pop it uh, with its opposite color, so the blues of her clothing kind of fill that role. And I'm trying to sort of find those, those uh, spectral colors, uh, uh, the rainbow is there, but it's sort of muted, and I wanted to... Uh, have that kind of pearlescent quality with the colors I picked for her horns. I'm just fussing with it a little bit. I was pretty nervous and excited about getting this design just right, so I went over it a couple times. In some, some cases, depending on the context, I might have committed earlier and, and started to move into final color, but I really wanted to get this one right. So, And there's still stuff about the design, the specific shapes of the wings, and uh, jewelry, and, and uh, the plating that I hadn't quite figured out just yet. So each time I go over it and, and add another layer of lines, I have more thoughts about the design and, and how the uh, 
themes work themselves out. Back to those horns. Just trying to find shapes that are unique, uh, symmetrical, but not so symmetrical that it looks sort of clinical. The uh, shape of her face was something I touched up a lot. Uh, this is where I started to think about uh, lionesses uh, as I got down to her paws and uh, and in her face, uh, thinking about the patterning around her eyes and cheeks. Uh, I, I had looked at some uh, lion reference to get an idea for how to work out the particular colors there. And even here, I, I just wanted her to have that feeling of, of power. It's really important to me that I preserve a sense of flow through the shapes in my designs. Uh, so a lot of the lines you'll see kind of interconnect and kind of flow from the same kind of curvature, getting her spine and the sort of shape of, of her neck into her chest, into her tail sorted out, helps to inform all the shapes of the you know, arms and legs and wings kind of sprouting off of that. As long as that central shape is strong, then everything else will be strong too. One of the things about this design uh, I was pretty cautious about and I wanted to make sure I got right was the balance of detail. I, I didn't want it to become overloaded. I had a lot of different ideas, you know, lions and moths and sunbursts and sunbeams. And I didn't want to have too much information cluttering up everything. One of the ways that I controlled that is with color. So by, by making most of her kind of a, a muted uh, ochre and, and gold um, color palette that blends all of the different aspects of the design together so that, uh, you know, the, the wings aren't yelling at you, like sort of shouting for attention quite as much as they might be if they were their own completely unique color, even though I did play with that idea later. Um, and the horns kind of sit quietly back. They're slightly more muted and everything kind of plays nice. I had the thought many times over the course uh, of the design, you know, how complicated and detailed do I want the patterning to be in both the clothes and the wings. Uh, ultimately, I, I pulled back a little bit and tried to make sure that um, it wasn't conflicting and, and drawing too much attention. Also knowing again that this was going to be adapted into a doll and the work was going to be quite uh, small scale to physically recreate this, uh, I definitely thought of that as I was going, trying to make sure that I wasn't <laughs> giving Catherine too much crazy work uh, to recreate in the end. So here with those layering uh, colors, I'm just trying to show her body clearly sort of uh, over the brighter silhouette shape of her wings. And even though those will receive patterning uh, later down the line, and I've kind of sketched that out. I know that, you know, Catherine and I had talked at that point and we wanted to do something a little more interesting with the patterning on the wings than I had sketched out initially. But uh, it took me actually a while. I put that off and kept putting that off because uh, I knew it was a design task I wanted to get just right and balance just right. But I wanted to move forward with the design, so I, I did everything else that I could figure out to do before coming back around to that. So just like a lion, uh, the, the darkest darks in the design kind of cluster around her lips and eyes. And that also helps to drive emphasis sort of to her expression and face. And then here I am starting to play with those wing patterning uh, ideas. There's a lot of different ones there that I'm trying out, uh, more to come to, uh, but the uh, sort of false eyes idea kept coming back, and I like the idea of sort of, you know, not just in her face, but also in the wing patterning to kind of blend the lion kind of motifs in a little bit more, so having the cat eye in the wings felt like a good idea. A lot of things I, I'll, I'll start and I'll go in with a, a really harsh color just to make sure I know what I'm doing really clearly. And, and, and then once it's all drawn in and painted in, I'll mute it down. Uh, it's either reducing opacity or changing the saturation just to let it sit in there and blend better with the colors that are already uh, on the character. And here there's this subtle sort of corona pattern behind her horns. Again, trying to keep it, you know, rich but not too complicated so that it doesn't draw too much attention to itself, balancing it against the dark of, of the rest of her head. 
I was playing with the idea of, you know, can I evoke a dragon's wing, but still use the moth patterns to kind of get it in there? And it was a fun idea, at least conceptually, but visually it just didn't quite feel right. Multiple eyes, but I already had her sort of magical sun orb, so that felt like I was over-designing that area a little bit. And you can see the blues there. I was thinking about scarab beetles and kind of their shimmering kind of blue... Uh, carapaces and thought maybe it would be neat to have kind of a scarab beetle kind of difference between the the back and front of her wings but ultimately I'm glad we went with what we did because the finished doll is so beautiful with that light coming through the wings and that really wouldn't be possible if the the wings were sort of blue on the other side another subtle sunburst motif on her tail and playing with different patterns for her uh, her shawl and uh, loincloth here again I was thinking you know I, I I really was tempted to do a lot of textile research and do something really complex, uh, but I erred on the side of something more simple and, and icon iconographic, <laughs> more iconic, kind of just more uh, more straightforward. Thinking of just trying to translate those radiant sunbeams uh, radiating out from her face, and finally, with all that sort of set in. I started to go into the shading and creating the light and dark here. It's a little harder to see when I get into the fine details, but this is some of the most rewarding work of the whole process for me. I really start to sculpt the character out and see all those forms kind of come into life. You'll notice I haven't committed yet to the, the pattern on those wings yet. Um, I, I was putting it off. Like I mentioned earlier, I was really trying to to use my spare time and momentum to move forward. Sometimes you, you just have the time that afternoon, but you might be a little scared of a particular part of the drawing or design, and I think it's, it's good to just move forward with what you do now. You could solve that problem later. I liked where the, the sort of collar frill of scales kind of landed. It's one of my personal favorite parts of the design. It reminded me of uh, Maleficent's costume, which I, I did a little work on back in the day. Oop, little edit for a friend's design there, thrown into the process. The other good thing about having simple patterning on her cloth and uh, and just generally on the design is that when you start to render it and, and light it, it uh, it's a little easier to read still. You can sort of see the folds, and if it were a more complex pattern, it might be harder to understand what's going on there. Another thing I was trying to balance as I went with the light and shadow was light source. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, there's light shining on her, but there's also light shining from within her. And that was a tricky balance to find. I think ultimately it, it worked out just fine. Uh, mostly when I'm drawing and painting like this, it's I'm trying to show almost like a diagram uh, all the shapes of the design. And it's not necessarily about how dramatic I can be with the lighting as much as, you know, how clear can I be? But I still wanted her to feel like she was full of light. So her wings, her crest, uh, each of those kind of have light kind of emanating from the center. And then, of course, the sort of sun orb in her hand. And that was something that I was borrowing from uh, Nix's design, uh, the moon uh, kind of caught in her horns. I wanted to create another kind of orb for the design here. Here I'm trying to work out just how much lion paw versus dragon claw uh, to get into the feet. I didn't want her to feel too much like a like a lion centaur or a fawn or something like that, but I just wanted it to evoke that sense. So there's some scaling on the inner thigh and some wrinkles by the uh, the knee. Relatively subtle stuff, just to make sure that the dragon-ness <laughs> is blended in with the lion-ness. I think I'm running out of, of stuff to fuss with before I finally figure out the patterning on those wings. I'm just finishing up that tail. Again, the tail just has like a subtle sun motif. I wanted it to have something there that spoke to the theme. 
but it's not as, as sort of dramatic or eye catching as the the headpiece, since that's the real the real centerpiece of the whole thing. Just fussing with the details, and here we go back into the wings. So at a certain point, you know, I had kind of some motifs that I, I liked about it, but I decided to just go straight in with inking. Uh, you know, having all of the rest of the design worked out. And this case actually worked in my favor since I could see how it would balance, you know, with everything else. Um, and using the single eye on the wing as kind of a central uh, shape that I could build flow off of. If you caught that there, if you uh, do digital work as well, I definitely took the flat wing design and then warped it for the, the second wing that's kind of curling in. A little trick of the trade, but some people might feel that's cheating, but I think you know anything that can get you to uh, a good result is uh, fine by me. <laughs> and here's that uh, color variation, just trying to build in uh, different tones within the wings. You'll see on real moths and, and butterflies as well, there's a lot of variation in the sort of stained glass cells of their wings, and I wanted to evoke that subtly and still have that glow coming through, some of the light coming through them. I think we're, uh, we're nearing in on, on finishing her up. At this point, I'm just adding sort of bounce lights into the shadows and there she is more or less fully formed hope you guys really enjoyed this i really loved making it and i can't believe how great the finished doll turned out i think there's just a little bit more process here but thank you so much for tuning in and see you on the internet <laughs>